Okay, everyone, let's talk about probability. Um, Section 7A just gives you some basic principles about probability, and uh, so we're going to start with some definitions and then just go straight into some data. Okay, we're going to talk about theoretical probability, relative frequency probability, subjective probability, probability distributions, and the probability of an event not happening. Okay, so that, that's an awful lot, um, and there, there's a lot to it. The first thing that we want to do is talk about the probability of an event. And this is the notation here that you're going to want to pay attention to, is the probability of an event. And it is always between 0 and 1. And it runs on a scale. If you have a probability of 0, that means it's impossible, something that cannot happen. If you go up to a probability of 1, that means it's a certainty. It is absolutely going to happen. And then the likelihood of an event happening going, goes from impossible to certain. So we go from unlikely to a 50-50 chance, which I will talk about. And that's what's also called a fair game. And it becomes more and more likely until it becomes a certainty. Okay. Now, the data that you provided on your test last time deals with what we call relative frequency probability. And relative frequency probability, it predicts what's going to happen based on actual observed data, which is what we did. So I like to just summarize that by saying a relative frequency probability is what actually happened. And we'll talk about theoretical probability here in a minute. But let's talk about what we did with, the, with the flipping the coin last time or at, on your test. And thank you for doing that, by the way. Okay. These are the relative frequencies of what happened. Okay. Student A got 10 heads and 10 he tails out of 20. Um, student N got 8 heads and 12 tails. Okay. And one of the questions that we asked you was, what do you think is, how many heads do you think you will get? Well, we're going to, again, talk about that. But let's look at what happened for particular students. So P of H means the probability of a heads for student B. So if we look at student B, we see here that there were 14 heads. And the number of flips was 20. So if we calculate that as a as a um, a fraction and you don't need to reduce it and we'll talk about that more as we go. And as a decimal of course as a decimal we just take 14 divided by 20 and we get 0 0.7. So you can see based on this particular data that since it's over here, it says it's going to show that 0.7 here is going to be more likely. If we look at the probability of a tail for student K, you can see here that the number of tails was 13 there were 20 flips of the coin, and if I take that and turn it into a decimal, that is 0 0.65. So this is kind of giving us contradictory information. Um, player B is telling us that it's more likely to come up with heads. Player K is saying that it's more likely to come up tails. Then if we look at student M, we can see that the probability of heads for student M is 11 out of the 20 tosses, 
which gives us a relative frequency probability of 0 0.55. But now let's look at the whole total and the probability of a tail for the total. Well, there were 188 out of a total of 390 tosses. And we get 0 0.48. Now, it's interesting that, you know, what actually happens and what should happen really is, you know, they're never going to be the same. Well, it's very rare. Sometimes you have here, like these got 10 out of 10, 10 of each. There's one in here that's way off. Let me see. Oh, 15 heads and five tails. So that's way off. But based on this, and we'll talk about why these are different here in a little bit as well. Based on these results, does the game seem fair? Well, if you look at each one individually, maybe not. Maybe if you looked at this one, you would say not. If you looked at this one, it's getting closer, so, you know, that would be okay. This is really close to a 50-50. So I would say yes. And it is because when you are calculating that kind of stuff, you want to look at, you know, a larger number. And again, we'll talk about that. Before we flip the page, I want us to talk now about what the difference is between relative frequency probability and theoretical probability. Theoretical probability predicts the likelihood of an outcome or event based on what we would expect to happen in an ideal world, or if you could do an infinite number of trials. And once again, it's still the number of ways the event can occur divided by the total number of all piece, possible equally likely outcomes. That's a mouthful. So the easy way to explain this is relative frequency is based on what actually happened. Theoretical is based on what should happen. in a perfect world. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about an experiment where we're talking about theoretical probability. Okay, suppose you have two coins and you flip them. Now normally we do this in class, but of course because of distance learning we just this just isn't very very likely. Okay, if you flip two coins one right after another there are four equally likely ways that the coins can land. You can get a heads on the first, a head on the second, a head and then a tail, a tail and then a head, and then a tail and a tail. So we want to be able to find the theoretical probability of a head tail. Okay. Well, the number of equally likely outcomes, there are four equally likely outcomes. So if I want to find the probability of a head tail, there's only one way for that to happen out of the four equally likely outcomes. And when we can convert that to a decimal, that's 0 0.25. If we want the probability of a tail tail, there's only one way that we can get that out of the four equally likely outcomes which again is 0 0.25 as a decimal. But if we want to look at the, prob the probability that both coins are the same, which would be either a head head or a tail tail, there are two ways for that out of the four equally likely outcomes, which is 0 0.50. And if you have, want to find the probability that the coins are different, then you have the head tail or the tail head. So there are two ways that that can happen out of the four equally likely outcomes, which is 0 0.50. Okay, so suppose we, took that, we take that and turn it into a game. And you're playing with somebody else, and um, if it comes up, as where the coins match, player A wins, and if the coins don't match, 
that player B wins. Okay. Based on the theoretical probabilities, are the rules of the game fair? Well, let's see. The probability that they are the same is the probability of head-head or tail-tail, which is 0 0.50. You could have used the fraction or the de decimal. The probability that they are different is the probability of head-tail or tail-head, which is also 0 0.50. So, yes, the game seems fair. Okay, so let's look at rolling a dice. You've got a fair, and this is important, that it is a fair six-sided die which means that e any one of these outcomes is equally likely. So what is the probability that the lands on a number five? Well, there is one way for that to occur out of the six possible outcomes, which when we convert that to a decimal is 0 0.17. What is the probability that it lands on a three or a four? This is a probability of three or four. Well, you have two opportunities for that out of the six equally likely outcomes, which gives you a probability of 0 0.33. What is the probability that the die lands on a number greater than seven? So the probability of greater than seven well, there's no way that zero, pop zero ways it can land out of the six possible outcomes, which means the probability is 0, 0.00. Now, what that means here is that this is impossible. There's no way that can happen. And if you go back to the first page on your scale, you can see that, that, act, that there is uh, something that absolutely cannot happen. Okay, for our next questions, we are going to look at just a standard deck of cards. And for those of us who play cards, we know this. Those of us who don't play cards, let's go through this. It shows a standard deck of 52 cards. We've taken the jokers out. There are four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. Within these, the hearts and diamonds are red, the clubs and spades are black. There are 13 cards in each suit, an ace, the two through 10, the number cards, and the face cards, which are a jack, queen, and king. Okay, all right. So let's find some theoretical probabilities of drawing, and we've got the cards, we've mixed them all up. What is the probability that a card selected at random is the jack of diamonds? Okay, well, the probability of a jack of diamonds well, there is only one jack of diamonds. I guess I should point to the right card. So there is one way that that can happen. There are a total of 52 cards. And if I convert that into a decimal, that is 0 0.02. Okay. All right, so we put that back. We, look, we shuffle the cards again. What is the probability that a card selected at random is a club? So the probability of a club, well, we have to find out how many ways that can happen. Well, if we look at the clubs, there are 13 of them out of the 52 total cards. And that gives us a probability of 0.25. Okay, what is the probability that the card is an ace or a king? So an ace or a king 
Now I try not to mark this up. There are four aces and there are four kings. So there are eight ways out of the 52 cards that you can get either an ace or a king and if you convert that to a decimal that's going to be 0 0.15 okay all right now these are the problems that you're going to do in groups a fair six-sided die is rolled one time notice again it says fair the die can either land on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Find each theoretical probability and write as a fraction and a decimal. Okay, so the probability of a 6. Well, there's only one way to get a 6 if you're rolling a single die out of the 6 possibilities. And if you convert that to a decimal, it's 0 0.17. The probability of an even number. Well, there are three ways. This is the same thing as saying a probability of a 2 or a 4 or a 6. So there are three ways to get an even number out of the six possibilities, which gives us a probability of 0.5. If we want to find the probability of a number less than 7, well, all of these are less than 7, so there are six ways to do that out of the six possible income um, outcomes, and that gives us a probability of 1. Now, when there was a probability of 0 that was, that was considered impossible, this is considered certain. If you draw a card, it is, or roll the die, it is certain that the number is going to be less than 7. Okay. And then finally, if you have the probability of a 1 or a 2, well, there are two ways to do that out of the six possible outcomes, which is a probability of 0 0.33. Okay, what is the probability that a randomly selected person has a birthday in December? Okay, now, what you have to do here is you would want to say, okay, well, there are 12 months in a year, so it's 1 out of 12. Well, except that all the months do not have the same number of days. So you have to take that into consideration. Okay, so this is a, the probability of December is going to be the number of days in December divided by the number of days in a year. Okay, the number of days in, a, in December is the number of ways that it can occur, which is 31. The days in the year are 365. And again, if I convert that to a decimal, I get 0 0.08, which is close to 112. OK. Let's go back to our playing cards. Now I'm going to go ahead and show the deck up here. Find each probability using a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Okay, the probability of a red card. Well, all the hearts and all the diamonds are red, which means there are 26 red cards out of a total of 52 cards, which gives us a probability of 0.5. The probability of a queen, there are four queens out of the 52 cards, which gives us a probability of 0 0.08. 
the probability of a black face card. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark this up a little bit. The probability of a black face card. There are six black face cards. So that is going to be six out of 52, which is 0 0.12. The probability of a red 8. Well, there are two red 8s, so that's going to be 2 out of 52, which is 0 0.04. Okay, so let's talk about what the law of large numbers says. This compares relative frequency, probability, and theoretical probability. The larger the number of trials, the closer the relative frequency probability will be to the, to the theoretical probability. And this is what happened with the data on the first page. Is, you know, one was slanted one direction, one was slanted the other when there were only 20 trials. But then when we got down to where we were looking at 390 trials, it was much closer to a 50 50. Okay, so let's say, suppose there are two possible outcomes when flipping a coin, either a head or a tail. So the probability that the coin lands heads up is one half, and the probability that it lands tails up is one half. If we flip a single coin four times, would it be too surprising for the coin to land on a head three out of the four times? Well, no. No. With only four trials, with only four trials, There really can be, there are really no expectations. It would not surprise me if it came up as heads four times. Only the 50-50 comes in when we're dealing with a really large number of trials. Okay, so suppose you cost toss a coin 200 times and the coin lands on heads 105 times. Do you have reason to suspect that the coins are unfair? Okay, well let's compare the relative frequency and the theoretical. Okay, well the relative frequency pop is we got is 105 divided by 200 which is 0 0.53. The theoretical probability they've already said is one half or 0 0.50. So the answer here I would say do you have reason to suspect it's unfair? No. The relative frequency and theoretical are close. Okay. okay, so suppose you toss a coin 200 times and the coin lands on heads 49 times. Do you have a reason to suspect that they are unfair? Okay, well let's do the same thing. Let's compare the relative frequency, and I'm going to start abbreviating here. Well, that's 49 out of 200, which is 0 0.25. The theoretical should be 1 half. And so I would say yes. The relative frequency and theoretical are not close with 200 trials. Now, 
That doesn't mean that it is unfair. It just means that you might suspect that it is unfair. We're, when we're talking, one of the questions I get frequently is, well, what's considered a large trial? And there really is no set number that says this is okay, this is not okay. It's really kind of a judgment call. All right, I'm going to switch videos and then we will continue on.